Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now the best gaming CPU in 2024 for mid-range PC builds, it's the Ryzen 5 7600 and Ryzen 5 7600X. But getting the right motherboard, RAM, and GPU it can be confusing. This 2024 Ryzen 7600X PC build guide, we're gonna cover everything that you need for the best Ryzen 7600X build or best Ryzen 7600 build, including updated advice for the best GPU for the Ryzen 7600, the best RAM for the Ryzen 7600, the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7600, and more. And we'll give you specific build templates for both a budget Ryzen 7600 build and a premium Ryzen 7600X gaming PC build. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like because it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, let's jump into it. So should you get the Ryzen 7600X versus the Ryzen 7600? Right now in the US, they're almost the same price with the Ryzen 7600 about $180 US and the Ryzen 7600X coming around $195. The Ryzen 7600X comes with a default 105 watt TDP profile and does not include a box cooler. While the Ryzen 7600 comes with a 65 watt TDP profile and includes the Ray Stealth box cooler, which I'm gonna recommend that we replace anyway. The Ryzen 7600X has a slightly higher boost and base frequency out of the box, but we don't really need to worry about the default settings as I recommend that we turn on Precision Boost Overdrive. This is AMD's auto overclocking feature, which basically improves the performance of each CPU and allows the Ryzen 7600 to come within a couple percent of performance of the Ryzen 7600X even when using an ultra fast GPU like an RTX 4090. We show you how to turn on Precision Boost Overdrive in our How to Set Up a PC video, which is linked down in our How to Build a PC playlist in the video description. My advice, just get the cheaper of the two, but if they're close in price, feel free to spend up to $15 more on the Ryzen 7600X. So what's the best GPU for the Ryzen 7600X? Remember that we get the most FPS in a gaming PC build when we get the fastest GPU that we can afford and then just get a CPU that won't bottleneck it. We go through this in detail in our best CPU and GPU combo 2024 video, so check that out for a deeper dive as to why. The Ryzen 7600 is a great choice for mid-range GPUs that that would otherwise be bottlenecked on a more budget tier CPU like a Ryzen 5600X. The lowest GPU that I'd recommend for the Ryzen 7600, it's the AMD Radeon 7700 XT 12GB or NVIDIA's RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte GPU. I would not recommend any of the current Intel A-series ARC GPUs as they just aren't fast enough to take advantage of the CPU. While the Ryzen 7600 is fast enough for GPUs up to a Radeon RX 7900 XTX or even an RTX 4090, the CPU does start to become a bottleneck and I would recommend moving up to the Ryzen 7800 X3D for the top end GPUs if you can to get the full performance. But the Ryzen 7600 is amazing for GPUs like the RX 7800 XT, 7900 GRE, and 7900 XT, and on the NVIDIA side, the RTX 4070, RTX 4070 Super, and RTX 4070 Ti Super, especially when you're playing 1440p or 4K where the GPUs are primary bottleneck. So what's the best RAM for the Ryzen 7600X and Ryzen 7600? Well, at this point, everything has been tested so many times over, I'm just gonna give you the bottom line. And for a deeper dive, watch our current Best RAM for Gaming video in our How to Build a PC playlist that's linked down in the video description. The Best RAM for the Ryzen 7600X and 7600 is a two-stick kit running at DDR5 6000 CL30. We do not want to go over 6000 speed because it's a hard limit for the Ryzen 7000 series memory controllers, which want to run at a one-to-one -one speed with our RAM. We do not want a single RAM stick as that hurts our FPS performance, and we don't want four sticks as the memory controller can't run them all at the faster rated speeds. So just go DDR5 6000 CL30, and in the US, two stick kits at that speed come in a minimum of a two by 16 gigabyte kit, so 32 gigabytes total. That's great because in 2024, there are now a handful of AAA titles that can micro stutter with only 16 gigabytes of RAM. So we switch all of our recommendations over to 32 gigabytes, which is plenty for 99% of gamers. Don't forget to go into the BIOS and activate the XMP or AMD Expo one-click auto overclocking profile to get the full rated speed of your RAM. We show you how to do this in our how to set up a PC guide. In testing, there's zero difference between using XMP versus AMD's Expo one-click overclocking profiles. And all the AM5 motherboards can use either one, so don't worry about which one you get. But if your RAM does come with both XMP and Expo profiles, I'd go ahead and select the AMD Expo one in the BIOS. 
If you live in a market where you can't get DDR5 6000 CL30, my recommendation is to get as close as possible. The current best RAM for Ryzen 7600X and Ryzen 7600 for price and performance are the Team Group T4 Delta RGB DDR5 6000 CL30 kits, which come in a two by 16 gigabyte kit, so 32 gigabytes total for just under $100 in either black or white. For our build, we used a silicon powered DDR5 6000 CL30 kit in white. They also come in black and they also come without RGB for a couple dollars cheaper. G-Skill produces both very low profile rip jaws kits. Those are great for mini ITX builds where the cooler clearance is an issue and their popular Trident kits that come in both non-RGB and RGB, as well as silver and black colors for just a couple dollars more than the T-Force kits cost. I'll leave several of them linked down in the video description and you can buy the one that you like. So what's the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7600X and Ryzen 7600 in 2024? Well, we've got an entire video on the best motherboard for Ryzen in 2024. So I'll leave that link down in the how to build a PC playlist for more information. Now the Ryzen 7600 gaming PC builds are all about value. So we wanna get a B650 motherboard, possibly a B850 when they come out depending on their pricing. We cover all the chipsets in a Ryzen motherboard video, so check that out for more. But I would avoid the A620 and B840 boards, which lack the GPU and CPU features that we need, as well as the overpriced X670 and upcoming X870 boards. Note there's a small chance you may need to use the BIOS flashback feature for the Ryzen 7600 non-X CPU with a B650 board if you get one that's been manufactured before the release of the non-X CPUs. All the boards have BIOS flashback, it's easy to do, and we show you how to do it in our How to Build a PC guide. For gamers, the main motherboard features that you want to focus on are whether you want two or three M.2 NVMe SSD slots on the board, how much rear panel USB connectivity you want, whether you want Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to come with the board, of course you can always add this in later, whether the board comes with basic or upgraded audio, and of course the quality and looks. Value picks start at $130 to $150 US and all include basic audio. We went with the $149 MSI Pro B650M-A Wi-Fi in our build. It's got a huge amount of rear panel USB connectivity, two M.2 NVMe slots, Wi-Fi, a rock solid VRM, and it's got great styling. My other top micro ATX pick is the ASRock B650M Pro RS Wi-Fi at 149, which is very similar, but trades out a little bit of USB connectivity for a third M.2 NVMe SSD slot. So the third one is only half bandwidth. If you wanna save a little money, the Gigabyte B650M Gaming Wi-Fi Plus is $130 US and offers cut down USB connectivity, a weaker VRM that I'd only use for Ryzen 5 or 7 class CPU, and two NVMe SSD slots, but it's cheap and it looks nice. I'd avoid the ASRock HDV M.2 board as it does not have an RGB header, and the cheaper boards generally offer garbage features for only a tiny cost savings, so why I'd avoid them too. For ATX size boards at $150, ASRock's B650 PG Lightning offers a similar M.2 setup to its Pro RS, but increases the rear USB connectivity to include more high-speed connections and has a rock-solid VRM, but no Wi-Fi. There's also the B650 Gigabyte Eagle AX for $149. It adds Wi-Fi, but drops some of the USB connectivity and the wired Ethernet down to one gigabit per second. For the right price, I like the MSI Gaming Wi-Fi B650, which is just an ATX version of the Pro B650 M-A, and the ASUS Tough B650-E has come down in price to 169 and includes a third M.2 slot at full bandwidth. Premium motherboards start around $180 US and include three full bandwidth M.2 NVMe SSD slots, expanded USB connectivity, and upgraded audio to the ALC 1200 or the higher quality ALC 1220 or 4080. Those last two are the same for audio performance. At around $200, I like the MSI B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, it's been more affordable down at $180, but recently went back up in price. I also like the $179 ASRock B650 Steel Legend Wi-Fi, which looks amazing on its white PCB. At the time of recording, it is out of stock everywhere due to high demand, and it offers upgraded ALC 4082 audio. For more options, check out our Best Rising Motherboard 2024 video where I go through ITX, color theme, creative, and other alternative motherboards. Now let's talk about the best CPU cooler for the Ryzen 7600. The Ryzen 7000 CPUs, they're designed to use all available cooling under load to increase the clock speeds. So while under load, they tend to run hotter than PC builders were used to in previous generations. But despite that, the Ryzen 7600X and 7600 
they're very easy to cool, even when you're using Precision Boost Overdrive, which we recommend turning on in the BIOS. And we go over how to do this in our How to Set Up a PC Guide. I do recommend ditching the included Raystel stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 7600 Non-X in favor of at least a budget tower air cooler in the $18 to $35 range, like one of the many Thermalright Assassin coolers. We use the Thermalright Assassin Spirit 120 Evo in white for just $21 an hour build. Great alternatives include the id cooling SE214 XT and newer A400 coolers, or the really striking Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo. If you want even more cooling, you can step up to the $35 to $50 range with the Thermalright Peerless Assassin for just under $40 or id cooling A620 for $40. For those of you looking to add some bling to your system, any 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler is more than enough for the Ryzen 7600X or 7600. In particular, Thermalright now has an incredibly affordable lineup of RGB AIO coolers starting around $45, or go crazy for just $56 with a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler like we used in a recent build. I'll leave links to these coolers and some other suggestions down in the video description. So what's the best SSD for the Ryzen 7600X? If you haven't had a chance to watch our best SSD for gaming 2024 video, it's linked down in the video description under our how to build a PC playlist if you want a deeper dive. But basically, there's just no current gaming benefit from using anything faster than even a SATA SSD. But Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, they're equally cheap, they're faster for other workloads, and they're easy to install. But Gen 5 NVMe SSDs continue to be massively overpriced and a total waste of your money. For budget-focused builds, the Silicon Power A60, the Team Group MP33, or the Western Digital SN580, they're great drives that we've recommended in the past. Silicon Power has recently discounted their UD90 to nearly the same price as the slower A60, and we used a one terabyte model for $59 in this build. For more premium builds looking to add a DRAM cache to make their SSD a little snappier when doing things like file copies and game installs, consider grabbing a drive like the Team Group Z440 for $69, or the Silicon Power XS70 for about $80. But my recommendation, just don't overspend too much here. For those needing a lot of storage, four terabyte NVMe SSDs are often the best price per terabyte. And this isn't 2017 anymore, so you do not need a separate drive for your operating system. A single large capacity drive is fine to save money. I'll leave several links down in the video description. For the PC case, what we want here is good airflow but we don't really want to overspend too much. Ideally, we'd want at least two intake and one exhaust fan, though more airflow is always better. Now, great budget options can be had for as little as about $55, starting with the Okinos Aqua 3 that we used in our build. Offered in black or white, it has a stunning atrium style case with two glass panels and a minimal footprint and comes with three ARGB fans set up in a unique negative pressure exhaust airflow using the bottom mesh to intercept the dust. It was easy to build in and super cheap. For atrium style ATX cases, we recently used the excellent $63 Montec XR, which comes in black or white and offers three ARGB fans, including two reverse blade fans on the side for maximum looks and a very premium feel. If you want a more traditional case, the Fractal Pop Air and Pop Air Micro ATX cases are insane value for $59 with three included ARGB fans and overall high build quality. For more options, check out our best PC case 2024 video. Let's talk power supply or PSU for short. If you haven't seen our How to Buy a PSU 2024 guide, we cover how to size and buy the best unit for your build based on unit quality rather than the nonsensical 80 plus ratings. Now I'll leave that link below. Basically, I take the rated power draw and PC part picker of all the components and then I multiply it by 1.5 to get the minimum wattage. Because the Ryzen 7600 is so power efficient, many builds won't require much more than 550 to 750 watts using this formula. For more value-focused builds around the $1,000 price point, I think a unit rated in the C tier on the PSU cultist list is absolutely fine, like the MSI A650BN or A750BN. But if you can, then I'd spend just a bit more on a B or A tier rated unit, like the Corsair RME lineup. Note that our PSU only came with one EPS 8-pin power cable, and this particular motherboard has an extra 4-pin connector, which you don't actually need to connect, but I will leave a different budget PSU link down in the video description if you want the extra connector. Now, I've put together two build templates to get you started. The first is a best value build that uses the Ryzen 7600, currently at $182, with a budget tower air cooler, 
a value focused B650 micro ATX size motherboard with Wi Fi, DDR5 6000 CL30 non RGB RAM, a one terabyte budget NVMe SSD, a currently $385 RX 7700 XT 12 gigabyte GPU, the same Okanus Aqua 3 PC case that we used, and the same MSI 650 watt PSU rated C tier on the PSU cultist list. Now that build comes in at just under $1,000. For a more premium build that doesn't stray too far from value, I've upped the GPU to an RX 7900 XT 20 GB for about $300 more. I've switched the cooler to a reasonably priced 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler with RGB. I've upgraded the motherboard to an ATX size premium model. I've gone with RGB on the RAM at the same speed. I went with a Gen 4 SSD with DRAM, added in a more premium atrium style case and a 750 watt A tier rated PSU all for a little more than $1,400. Obviously, if you want, you can spend more, but those two templates should get you started, and I'll leave both linked down in the video description for you to check out current pricing and availability in your region. Remember to check out everything linked down in the video description for current pricing and availability, and our how to build a PC playlist, including our guide on how to build a PC and set up your PC after you build it. If you got value out of this video, please give it a like, so it makes a huge difference to the channel, and of course, subscribe for more cool content, and we'll catch you on the next one.